Hello, today we're going to make a quick review of projectile motion. Projectile motion is uh, simply the type of motion in which gravity is the only force acting on the object. Let's say that we have this blue ball over here and it's going to be kicked so the trajectory that it's going to describe is going to be more or less this one. Um, so what a better way to practice than solving a problem. So let's imagine that this ball has a mass of uh, 0.5 kilograms. That's a very heavy ball. Okay. Um, and uh, the person who kicked the ball did it at an angle of, mm, let's be uh, optimistic and say that did it at 35 degrees. Okay. So this is the angle that is going to be described between the trajectory or the vector velocity and the horizontal. So we have 35 degrees. And the velocity at that particular angle is going to be, let's say, 8 meters per second. Okay, so the question that we have to solve now is how far will the ball go? That's what we need to find. Okay, if you are looking for the distance, well, basically, if we look at this triangle, what we have to do is multiply velocity times time. So if we are looking for distance, we need to know the velocity and the time. But according to this problem, we are having a trouble here because we can figure out the velocity, right? They gave us this velocity of 8 meters per second at our 30 de 35 degree angles. So we can figure out what is the horizontal component of this velocity, right? We can figure that out. But how in the world are we going to figure out the time? We need the time as well, see? So before we run into distance equals velocity times time, we need to figure out first of all, what's going to be the time. Right now, we can easily see how we're going to figure out the velocity. As you can tell, we have a semi, not a semi, a triangle, a right triangle here. We can just finish it. This is a right triangle, so we can, we can work with the functions uh, sine and cosine, and all those nice trig uh, functions. So, we are being given the hypotenuse, right? This is 8 meters per second, and we need now to find the horizontal velocity. If we ever want to figure out this uh, distance, we need that velocity over the horizontal component. So, if we have this angle, what function are we going to use? Well, we're going to use cosine, because as you remember, cosine of the angle, angle theta, is going to be equals to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Well, we have the angle, right? 35. We are looking for the adjacent. That's what we are looking for. The horizontal component is the adjacent side to this angle. And we know we have the hypotenuse. So if we are looking for the adjacent, we simply need to just cross multiply in here. If we multiply cosine of 35 times the value of the hypotenuse which is 8 meters per second that's going to give us the adjacent so we have now that the horizontal velocity which corresponds to the adjacent I'm going to call it Vx which means the x component of the velocity is going to be, after you run this in your scientific calculator, 6.5 meters per second. But remember, we still have a problem. In order to figure out the distance that the wall is going to travel, we need not only the velocity, which we already figured out, right? The horizontal component of this uh, 8 meters per second, which is 6.5 meters per second, we also need the time. We don't have the time. so. 
here is where things get a little bit more a little bit more confusing and complex and we need to analyze now the vertical component of this projectile motion and before I forget I'm gonna write down over here that the x component of the velocity is 6.5 meters per second I need that handy alright so we need to figure out the time well this um, is now accelerated motion because we have gravity right we're gonna use 9.8 meters per second square as the value of gravity from your kinematics formulas you can state that uh, V2 minus V1 equals acceleration times time. Ooh, let me write down that again. So V2 minus V1 equals acceleration times time. Well, this is free fall, so our acceleration is going to be gravity, 9.8. The final velocity is the velocity at the top, so our final velocity is going to be, of course, uh, zero because the ball is going to stop at the very top in the vertical component. But what about our initial velocity, the velocity at which the ball will take off? Well, again, now we're going to take care of some functions to figure out that velocity. In here, we can see that we have the hypotenuse which is 8 meters per second and now we're looking for the vertical component the vertical component is this one right so we have the angle 35 now we're looking for the vertical component you can easily see that the vertical component here is gonna relate to the function sine because you know that sine of the angle is gonna be equals sine of the angle is going to be equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse that's why we will use sine so this opposite side this opposite side this one over here is going to be equals to the multiplication of these two sine of the angle in this case our angle is 35 so sine of 35 multiplied by the hypotenuse which is 8 meters per second it's going to be equals to our vy the vertical component of the velocity after you do that in your scientific calculator you will see that the vertical component of the velocity is going to be equals to 4.58 we can round that to 4.6 easily meters per second so now we have this velocity this velocity is of course 4.6 meters per second we just solve for that and graciously we have the acceleration which is gravity so we can finally figure out what is gonna be the value of time so I'm gonna work in this little side sorry I'm a little bit disorganized but so if we are looking for time right we're looking for time we're going to bring the acceleration to the other side so what we're going to have is velocity divided by acceleration but in this case acceleration is gravity so if we divide our velocity which is 4.6 by gravity which is 9.8 we are going to get our time so we will have that the time that is going to take to go all the way up is going to be 0. 46 seconds but the time that is gonna go up see from here to here is just half of the way we are trying to find the time from the beginning to the landing area so what we need to do is multiply what we just got by 2 so if we multiply this times 2 we're gonna have the total time and our total time is gonna be 0 0.92 seconds just a little bit less than a second so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna write this time over here so we can compute that total distance later on 0.92 seconds 
Okay, right now we are really close to get our final answer. <clears throat> so, before we just run our beautiful formula that says that distance equals velocity times time, let's recap what just happened. So we have a soccer ball kicked at an angle of 35 degrees over the horizontal, above the horizontal, and with a velocity of 8 meters per second. Because we are looking for the total distance travel, we need to know velocity and time. The velocity that we have is a compound velocity, so it's at an angle. We need the horizontal velocity. For that, we will use the cosine function, because at this particular point, we need this one, the velocity in the horizontal component. So that one will be given by the function cosine. So cosine of the angle is going to be equals, angle right here, is going to be equals to uh, the adjacent, which in this case happens to be the x component of the velocity, over the hypotenuse, which in this case is a meters per second. Okay. So that will give us the velocity we need, but we will be short because we didn't have the time. In order to figure out the time, we need to look at the vertical component of this uh, motion. So in order to do this, we needed some problem solving on the vertical component. So remember the formula we used? Final velocity minus initial velocity equals acceleration. In this case, acceleration is gravity, so I just want to go ahead and write g acceleration times time. So we can solve for t because the final velocity at the very top over here, this velocity on the way on the y axis, excuse me, is going to be 0, right? vy over here will be 0. It's going to have velocity in the horizontal component, but the vertical component will be 0. So uh, this one will be 0. And we know g, right? 9.8 so we can solve for time because the velocity can be given by the function that gives us the opposite. In this case, the opposite with this double line is going to be given by the function sine. So if we do sine of the angle, it's going to give us the opposite, which happens to be in this case vy, right? The y component of the velocity divided by the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is that 8 meters per second. So that's how we got the time, because we needed the vertical component of the velocity solved by this equation. If we solve in here, and we, if we solve, if we solve for time, we are going to be able to see that the time is going to be 0.46, I think it was. But that's the time just to go to the top. We need the total time from here to here, so we need to multiply this by two because we need going up and going down. So if we multiply that point 46 by 2, it's going to give us 0 0.92. So that's the total time. So now, finally, we are ready to run this simple formula. Okay, so what we have is that the distance is going to be equals to the horizontal component of the velocity, which is 6.5 meters per second, times the time it takes for the whole trip, which is 0 0.92 seconds. And that's going to give us a total distance of 5.98 meters, of course. These seconds cancel these seconds, so we end up having only meters. So that's the uh, final answer. When you kick a ball, regardless of the mass, right? When you kick a ball at an angle of 35 degrees with a velocity of 8 meters per second, that ball is going to land 5.98, almost 6 meters away from the original point. There you go. This problem was kind of long because you had to work on both components. You have to go and figure out what was the horizontal component of the velocity so you can 
use it in here, right? You also needed to find the vertical component of the velocity so you can figure out the time using the acceleration uh, formula. And at the end, you just apply the simple formula that says that distance equals velocity times time. That's when you bring all together to this final answer of 5.98 uh, meters. I hope you understand.